everyone, welcome welcome to Whack Whack Comics. I'm here with my co-host as always, Tyler. How you going, man? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I just want everyone to know this would this wouldn't happen on anyone else's stream. No, no it would not. Oh my god, it would be frowned upon by the most best people. Best content over here. <laughs> hey, we go live. Oh, wow. And our happen. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> right, well, it's about that time of the show, right? Oh, it must be. It must be. Hey, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm always ready. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Whack, uh, fucking Whack Comics. I'm here, as always, with my co host, Ignacio. And we've got a, a, spe a special guest today. We're going to be interviewing Aaron Summit. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. From Maurice in the Metal. Thanks so much, Aaron, for joining us. Uh, no, thanks for having me. Yeah, you did pronounce it right. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. It I'm trips glad up you a lot of Yeah. Uh, uh, Sabbath. Yeah. Sabbath. <laughs> Thanks. Like a lot of people trip up on that. Like, yeah. Like Sabbath. Like Sabbath with, a, with a T. Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys? Absolutely. Thanks for having me on the show. No worries, hey, man. I'm coming, man. Yeah. I've been keen, uh, like I was saying in the back uh, before we started, I've been keen to have you on uh, since I picked up the first two issues off yeah at, at, at uh, I was comic con last year in november it was so yeah. fucking good just i remember uh, get, getting home and reading those two issues and messaging you straight away and being like dude this is the fucking legit the best uh indie comic book that i've read like i do remember that that was yeah. uh, that, that hit me right there uh, <laughs> that was crazy um because there was a lot of indie comics at that at that con um and uh, when i do get that kind of feedback um you know, it, it's it's crazy because I, I still think it's a crazy book, you know. And, and then when you start getting fans from uh, local, like local here in Brisbane, Australia, and then, um, you know, there are people who got in contact with me from Portland in the US and said, uh, here's a video of me slapping one of the Maury stickers on a street sign. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that does feel pretty rad. It's uh, crazy to me still. still. Yeah. Well, yeah, you um, made a hell of a comic, man. That that no. that translates and and connects with people because when I was reading it, I was kind of it, it reminded me of a of a of my background as a roadie. I, I was a roadie when I was younger. Oh wow, awesome! And yeah, so it it instantly connected with me, and yeah. and the music references and the the feels, you know, because you have the, it's read with feelings about the music, about family, about uh, tribes, urban, urban, urban tribes. Yeah. It's, yep. it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and, well, you're, in your time as a roadie, did you ever see stuff that, you know, you wish you could have like just noted, noted down and said, that's, that's a story. You know, there are so many things that happen while a band's on the road and. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, uh, yeah. The, the inspiration for the, for the music really did come from, just wanting to have an environment that had enough conflict and character and story kind of going on. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that I got music as a, a backbone to my story. Uh, and because of the story, the way it is, I think people will just be able to relate to it in that way as well. Um, you know, just the, uh, the emotional impact that music has on somebody. I think people will get into the comic just for that reason. Yeah. And but you, you mentioned the, the parallels between that kind of, uh, uh, touring life and and the stories you can bring to your comics. Yep. What kind of story from your life uh, made you do this comic? Um, it wasn't as rock and roll as I'd like to admit, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, I was I was just depressed one day getting to work, and the music I actually had on through my headphones wasn't working. You know, it wasn't actually giving me any kind of buzz. So I put on Metallica's Master of Puppets. And, um, you know, every time that riff hit, you know, I was just pounding the pavement. I was walking stronger. And, um, you know, I just felt like I had the strength that I didn't have before. And uh, as I opened the doors to my office um, and I just went, why, why couldn't a superhero be kind of fueled by this? And, uh, yeah, by the end of that first day, I had mapped out pretty much the entire character. You know, the, the fact that they get their strength from heavy metal, uh, the fact that other genres of music take it away from them. So when they listen to pop music, they get weak and disorientated. And uh, and the fact that the the Walkman has been possessed by a Black Sabbath roadie, like they, that all happened in that first day. Uh, it was nice. It was 
like the first time I think I've ever been creatively struck by something, you know what I mean? Like it was just flowing, just kept on going. You were literally uh, struck by the metal. I was struck by the metal, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been working on it for a long time and every single time I feel like I am depressed, I'll pick up the comic and start either reading it or writing it or working on it. And um, it, it, it has become its own thing, you know. It's um, uh, an inspiration. Yeah, as much as the character gets inspiration and strength from the story, I get inspiration and strength from actually working on this book. So it's, uh, it's, it's one of my babies, really. Yeah. No, oh, happy Father's Day then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it is. It's not yeah. Father's Day down here yet, though. We, we well, it is Maurice here, is so... American, though. Yeah. yeah. Maurice is American, so... Oh, I'll he, take is, it. he is, he is. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, no, no, thanks. That's uh, great to hear. Um, so uh, did you, were you guys ever musicians, ever play in a band? How did the, how did the roadie gig start? Yeah, I was... Uh, at, at first, he was... Like we were teenagers, we were hanging out in a friend's house and they yeah. suddenly started a band just because, okay, let's start a band. And I was the feeling bass player, but I, I don't consider myself a musician. So I ended up being the roadie because I like to control things and I like to yeah. boss people around yep. and <laughs> I like to organize things. Yep. And I ended up also bass, being bass the Bass players that... don't get that opportunity at all. No. No. <laughs> uh, but I got to fill in on some gigs because the bass player wasn't there or whatever. Uh, but I, the thing that I got to enjoy most of it is that I got to set it all up or, or help to set it all up. And then yeah. I got to relax and enjoy the show. Yeah. You just saw it come together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm yeah, going to try to some musician. Characters. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a musician. I play the drums, um, so that's why I can relate to to Maurice especially. Fucking, yeah. I loved it. Um, that was one of the things that really drew me to it too. When I, I remember passing your desk and seeing a drummer, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Like uh, you don't really see that too much a drummer in, like on the front cover of a comic book, you know. So yeah. I was like, yeah. sold straight away from that. But uh, yeah. yeah, I fucking love playing the drums. I used to love playing gigs. We'd. I haven't played a gig since like um, about pre-COVID. Like COVID just okay. put a, a stop on everything, you know, as it yeah. did. And yeah. and uh, I think we've all been really slack getting back into it, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, can I ask uh, if, you know, you can't play gigs anymore. Uh, was there some kind of like flattening out? Like you, you go, well, I'm actually kind of depressed that I can't do that. And Dude miserable yeah. as hell yeah yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a an illustrative point of like how it feels for maurice to actually listen to this music um, yeah uh and the fact that performers are out there and they can't perform during those COVID years uh yeah that's crazy i feel for you on that one yeah not horrible what about yourself um, though do you play anything i i'm like ignazio i i i can't claim myself to be a musician but i do have a drum kit a little electronic one uh oh, i just no. It's more about just getting my frustrations out and then, you know, I feel right. You know, I'll play for like 10, 15 minutes and then I, I'm all right. Um, me and a friend can actually get through all, all the way through For Whom the Bell Tolls. Oh, I don't know, I don't know if anybody listening to it could go, that's For Whom the Bell No, you could probably couldn't do that. <laughs> but, um, I mean, when you go the dun, 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 that's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> that's it. You, you, you recognize it. If you hear, if, you, if you're a metalhead, you know yeah. that da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. that's yeah. it. Yeah, he, um, he's a much better guitarist than I am a drum player, a uh, drummer. So yeah, it it does sound like it should, but my drumming just so loose. Yeah, I definitely don't have that well, kind of um, <laughs> timing. Well, yeah. speaking of, of backgrounds and uh, not being considered yourself a, a musician, mm -hmm. uh, what's your background and what's your introduction to comics uh, in your life? How old were you? Uh, oh, okay. What hooked you in? Yeah. Um, my, my background was in publishing. Um, I've been in publishing for about 15, 16 years. Um, and then the comic really, well, the comic creation side of it was I'd been making so many people's other publications and magazines that I went, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it for myself. You know, I, yeah. I'm sick of doing it their way. This is... You know, I, I, I joke to people that uh, I do everything in this comic apart from draw it. So, and I know, like, 
the drawing is a pretty big part of it, but I still like the the masthead, the design, the logo, the video work, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's all me. Uh, but I guess for for me, uh, what got me into comics back in my heyday, you know, I can remember being a ten year old, and it was 1990, 1991, that era, uh, and Image Comics had just launched. Yeah. And uh, one thing about um, comics, uh, I I hate starting in the middle. So if you see Spider Man's up to issue two hundred and seventy, whatever. I'm going to go, Same. well, you know what? Same. Savage Dragon started at number one right in front of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, young, yeah. Young, I know the feeling. Young blood, young blood and Spawn. Like, that was enough for a kid to go, whoa. Yeah. And Image were really clever about having that that very similar strain, like, connectors through all their comics, but they had different, you know, characters that you can go, well, Savage Dragon looks badass, so I'm going to get yeah, that one. Yeah, definitely. And as a 10-year-old, the colors, the just so overdrawn, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. like like Spawn's got how many different little spikes and shit and chains everywhere. And the, yeah, the, and the crazy yeah. cape flowing yeah, around. Yeah, the crazy cape. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but for a 10-year-old, I was like in heaven. And uh, my yeah. there was no local comic book store when I was 10 growing up where I was. And uh, we only had the newsagent. So it was when it came in. Uh, we didn't know when it was coming in. wasn't regular. It was a really small news agent, but uh, yeah, I think that's when it started for me. Yeah, I remember those days. We were the same age, and I remember those those days in which you need to pray to whatever god is there that you can complete. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> you need you need to pray to them uh, that you can complete maybe a three issue run of a, of a <laughs> book know. because if yeah. because they bring one. Or maybe two, and if someone else wants that, then you're screwed. Yeah, screwed. Okay, yeah. you have you <laughs> yeah. have one and two of these run, but three never came back. Yeah, someone yeah. I took. don't think I could ever talk my mom and dad into getting a subscription to comics. You know. Oh um, no. 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 You still reading today? Are you still reading uh, today? Yeah, most of the stuff I get now is just on Kickstarter, um, oh, yeah. supporting those indie comics. Um, at the moment, uh, my favorite comics are. Um, uh, like the the bigger ones, uh, Aftershock and um, that uh, A Walk Through Hell was probably the last one I read where I went, wow, that's just insanely good. Uh, and then Shirtless Bear Fighter. You guys have oh, a dude. Shirtless Bear Fighter? <laughs> yeah. um, shirtless Bear Fighter. That, they just announced a sequel. It's coming sequel, soon. Yeah. 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 Um, that comic got me in so many ways. You know, yeah. I was actually rooting for him and I didn't know. I don't know how they can come up with a story that absurd. But I know, right? in, in, uh, in that comic where... You know, he's called Shirtless Bear Fighter, but he, they put a shirt on him and he loses his power. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just love that. Uh, I read, that's so insane. I read that and then Grizzly Shark back to back. Have you read Grizzly oh, yeah. Shark? No, no, I haven't. You're worth checking out. Yeah, it's about a, a shark in the woods and it's just as. <laughs> That's uh, Ryan Otley, right? It is Ryan Otley, and the art is fucking amazing. And it's just yeah, like right. the most silliest story ever, but it's fucking hilarious. You know? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you guys? Like, what's on your shelf at the moment? The, the thing, you know, who my favorite um, artist is ever, or my favorite writer and artist is Jeff Lemire, and I, I read a lot of his stuff, like yep. pretty much everything he does. And okay. what one thing, Tyler, um, you now so said sorry. Uh, before we went live, how we were saying this is like a, a slice of life story with a bit of uh, mystery added to it, you know, and like a, a sci-fi element, you know, and that's Jeff, that's Jeff Lemire all over, really. Like a lot of his stories are like that, you know, really grounded. And then it's like that one little thing. And I think that yeah. maybe that was one of the reasons why I dug Maury so much, you know, because it had that uh, familiar thing that I absolutely love, that slice of life with that little bit extra. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, when people ask me, like, uh, how come it's not like uh, the demonic side of heavy metal? You know, um, the there are, you know, some uh, satanic stuff going on in metal. But back then, in 1985 in America, it was like the satanic panic. Parents were like shitting themselves because their kids were getting into heavy metal, and uh, yeah, and that, that family element. games. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so it it kind of did did make more sense to go slice of life and i can write about that too because my household was very divided in what music we should be listening to and uh the reason why maurice actually has uh um this disconnect and his kryptonite is pop music is that's because that's how me and my sister got along 
you know, whenever she'd play Madonna, I, I would lose my mind and just not like, <laughs> you know, I pretend I'm like sick, you know, I'm like lurched over. And, um, so Maurice does that as well whenever he listens to well, pop music. Yeah. Well, um, with the, the, the divide and the distance with, with his mom is also uh, marked with by music, by, from the moment he baptizes him as one of the Bee Gees. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's, She's trying you know, to. <laughs> no, no, come, come in. Um, well, yeah, she she can see his, his uh, you know, kind of destiny of like already, you know, written uh, because his dad is such a metalhead that this is going to happen. So, calling him Maurice was a way to try and like, you, who who has ever heard of a metalhead called Maurice? Like, it's the least metal name possible. <laughs> and uh, even from that moment, that's the conflict that you know the mum and the the son have. Yeah, sorry, I cut and you off there. No, no, no. I was going to sing your praises again and, and, and basically note the, the amount of music references because you're not a, a, only a, a metal lover, you are a music yeah. lover and it shows in every single page. I don't know if you do it consciously on purpose or it just flows out of you, but the amount of visual and, and, and verbal or written reference you have to the music the amount of easter eggs the, the, yeah. the from from locations to words they use to t-shirts or situations uh it's it's really amazing the, oh, that's the, cool. the work you put there i don't know how you do it but you make it work in every single page it's it's outstanding <laughs> is it up in there oh that's great that's great to hear because um uh well part of part of me is like i want to make a comic book for everybody you know not a comic book just for metalheads not a comic book just for comic fans but uh yeah putting those easter eggs in um into uh, issues one to three uh that was just a lot of fun for me you know and sometimes i've i've told people like this is the easter egg here you know if you look in e issue one uh the the band notice board outside of the rehearsal studio that maurice and his band practice in uh, it's got Luke's wall on it at the bottom, and that's the that's the name of the outro to um, to Black Sabbath's uh, War Pigs. Like it's actually got an outro name, and uh, because it's Luke's wall, uh, that made more sense to me going doing that. And uh, Luke Wall was the Luke was a roadie for Black Sabbath, and Wall was another Bla uh, Black Sabbath roadie. So I've tried to put in some things where. Um, you know when like you you pick up a comic and um or you pick up like you watch a movie and somebody's just gone to that that level of detail that maybe it's not going to be seen and i'm okay with that because that level of detail makes me more interested in the story if i can see something that somebody else has put into it and that's what I, i'm trying to do uh there's a, a big easter egg in issue three um it's just a really famous photograph of um it's a, a famous photograph of Kurt Cobain, uh, and I've tried to replicate that in one of the scenes. I hope that people, after they see issue three, they'll get back in contact with me and say, hey, yep, I found it. I found it. <laughs> That's right. We're going to have to have another look. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah, mean, it's like a Wes so Wall. many. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I love the the idea of you bringing up the shirt as well, because it seemed like every issue I, I want Maury's to be putting on a new metal shirt from back in the day. Uh, and issue three, it's uh, Discharge. It's uh, the Discharge Y shirt. Um, uh, I, I feel like that's that's not only a good idea to put in that kind of thing because it makes it look more authentic. You know, these are the shirts yeah. that these guys would have been wearing. But uh, it's kind of like a library. You know, I, I'm opening up somebody to go, who is Discharge? I'm going to go check them out. Like it's a recommendation of, of more than anything. And if you hear uh, yeah. Discharge's album and then go, I want to listen to early Metallica now, you'll go, oh, there's so so much... There's so many similarities. You know, if Discharge had a more PC-friendly name, they probably would have been the next <laughs> Metallica. But there's no way in the world a band called Discharge was ever going to get to that, you know, stadium rock level because of the name of the band. Uh, and I, I do love that about it. I do love being able to hide those Easter eggs in. So it's, it's great. It's amazing. For, uh, you do it. Like repeat readings, you know, like finding something new each time as a reader, you know. Yeah, like, absolutely. I, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I was when I was reading for for today's interview, I took 
the time to read consciously when I started seeing, okay, okay, there's a lot here going on besides the action and the words. There's a lot of background elements. And I like, like usually take, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to read a 22 page book. Like, okay, it is happens. I took an hour and a half to read the three issues. Like, okay, this has, I, I, I blew it up in my screen. I, I looked at it. I, I, I basked in its glory. And of <laughs> course, I didn't get it all, but I really enjoyed it. It's a really yeah. enjoyable ex experience for someone who likes comics, who likes music, and to feel and that feels connected to not only the metal, but the, the other genres of music that are represented in the book. Because everyone has their voice. Her, he, yeah. Maury's sister has the voice of pop music. His mom has the voice of uh, 70s disco, sort of speaking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there, there's the gloomers, the, the yeah. goth kids. Yeah. And that connection with Maurice's uh, past or with his family past and the, the present, it's really well seated in the story. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm moving the chess pieces around at the moment. Uh, but yeah, that the uh, the idea of tribes. You brought up that word before. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very much a tribe based. You know, uh, you know, there's one group here and there's one group there, and and for some reason they seem similar to the outside. You know, a, a metalhead next to a, a goth would probably go, oh, they might be in the same group, but they're clearly not in this comic. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, I, I do love the idea about that tribe, and like in. 2022 it feels like there's no such thing as tribe we're just all all the one you know everybody's yeah. welcome but back then but yeah. back then punks didn't get along with metalheads you know they no. were at, you know no nah. they were um, at war you were to a concert in which they both mingled and yeah. they didn't mingle they no they fucked each other up in the mosh pit yeah <laughs> oh was, so yeah, that i, was I really see fun that to witness that <laughs> Oh, uh, witness of, yeah, but I'd say it's just a blast to be able to write about characters who are already at conflict. Uh, they're already at conflict and don't even know why, probably. You know, it's just, no, this is what we do. Not. No, this is what yeah, we do. It, it's just because we hear different uh, kind of music. Yeah, or yeah, absolutely. You, you use a metal? Yeah, you yeah. use a metal? Okay, I'm going to hate you just because you listen to metal and I listen yeah. to uh, <laughs> yeah. goth. Yeah, uh, I think uh, like Anthrax when they were playing, they, they had this like crossover between the punks in New York and the metalheads in New York. And, and whenever they play, it was, that was what was happening. How can I not write a Man. story about that? The conflict there is yeah. just powerful, really. Uh, one thing I wanted to explore in the story, and it may not make it in, but I just wanted to, you know, think about it out loud. But if uh, three tribes were in a, you know, going at it, would the, would there be some kind of allegiance between two tribes versus the one tribe? Yeah. Well, depends yeah. on what tribe are we talking about. Well, what, I would say you, if the, are... the punks, the punks and the metalheads, versus like the country and western fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can I clearly punks, they would be together. <laughs> yeah, clearly they would be together. But I think the punks would ally with the metalheads and then yeah. betray them. The betray them. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Kind of like a Game of Thrones, you know, it's genre of Thrones. <laughs> um, yeah, like, just because of the, the anarchy, idea. you know. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. They they would wipe out the country and Western fans in the Bay Area and then just immediately turn on each other and go for it as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. There was a, a lot of fun doing the research uh, about, about that. And um, in the Bay Area, there was a, a venue. I'm not sure if it was Ruthie's Inn because you'll see Ruthie's Inn. Uh, that was like the, the mecca of uh, Bay Area thrash. But at one place, they had a, uh, a punk venue and then right next door to it, they had a country and Western venue, uh, country music venue. And um, like it was just like the gigs would finish at the same time. People would go out to the car park and then mayhem. I, I, I would take. I would take. I don't want to go to the gig. I just want to see what happens in the car park. Yeah. Like, get on the roof and just watch. Um, yeah. So the, the the amount of conflict and story and depth in the music industry, and even if it was something as small as the Bay Area thrash scene, you know, that we're only talking like 10, 15 bands at the time, uh, but. You know, the stories of kids rocking up to school after Metal Monday or not turning up to school on Tuesday because Metal Monday was on. Uh, and <laughs> just the, yeah, it's it's an incredible thing to go and research. And if uh, people want like a a little entry level uh, 
documentary to get into it. It's uh, Murder in the Death Row, uh, Murder, Murder in the Front Row. Uh, that's a great documentary about the Bay Area thrash scene. So you check that one out. Definitely keen to check that out. How many, how, how long have you got uh, Maurice and the Metal like planned out? Like how, how many issues do you think you could go for? Uh, the first volume, I could see another uh, six issues after issue three. Oh wow! Um, every awesome. time I, every time I write one, I've come up with like a quarter's quarter of another comics like worth of material as well. Um, and I'm trying to be, you know, like a, a sculptor would just go. You know, I'm cutting stuff away, uh, but some of the stuff is just too funny not to like try and like leave yeah. in. I'm not trying to force anything. Um, it still it feels as organic as it did that first day where the story was just flowing through me. Um, but this this one, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and keep it to nine, maybe a tenth issue. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really so good. So regarding yeah. that, that, sorry, sorry, Lee, I interrupted no, you. No, I was just saying I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Like a lot more okay. story to come. That's great. Yeah, there is heaps more story to come. Yeah, I think it has a lot to, of fabric to cut from. So I think nine, ten, I think twelve can also be a number that you can aspire to. Yeah. But yeah. I read issue one, you didn't have an editor. No. And then on, on issue two and three, you have uh, you incorporated an editor to the team. What yeah. made you uh, go that route? Oh. Uh, because um, for people out there, there's sometimes an editor can either uh, help you or sometimes they they nose around too much and they they change things too much but it's yeah i mean it's really difficult to find that balance so what made you go that route and why did you go with the uh, editor you chose yeah um the editor is uh chris harms and back in my publishing days uh between 2004 and 2011 i was working for a uh, for a music magazine here in brisbane and uh, he was my editor on that so it seemed logical to bring in my music uh magazine editor from back then uh who's so keen on comics as well it just was like a really easy fit uh the the issue i had with issue one issue with issue one uh was um i was making a lot of mistakes and, and some, when somebody says oh you're a writer i go ah you know what i prefer the term creator like there are people out there writing like can string some words together i'm stringing ideas together and it just happens that you know sometimes the dialogue might be okay uh, but I, I do consider myself more a creator than a, a writer. Um, uh, having said that, when uh, I first sent him issue one, because when I printed issue one, uh, I just left his name off because it was so last minute. I just wanted him to read through it. But the feedback he gave me, even like he looked through it in an hour, you know, and said, no, you need okay. to change this dialogue here. You've, it's too wordy here in this one. Uh, and then when issue two came around, um, I gave him more time. Uh, more feedback, more opportunities, and in then he was just part of the team. Um, Excellent. In in issue three, I felt like I, I wasn't rushed, uh, but there was just things that I was doing that like I only pick up on it once he tells me, and it can be as simple as saying, uh, "There's two characters who say yeah a lot, and if they look similar and they sound similar, then people might you know get them confused." So I just I just went through it and, he, and I went yeah 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 and took I was going like what was I doing that day like I, sent this <laughs> a, I sent this as a draft and everything's got yeah 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 and I said I say yeah all the time I say absolutely well there you go yeah I and absolutely was all the way through it as well it was just I was talking more as me as the character not as the character as the character uh, so his feedback has been valuable for that. That's crazy really that great. you don't consider yourself a writer, though, because that's one of the things that I absolutely loved about um, the first two issues when I first read them was the writing. I thought the writing was top tier, you know, like the art was amazing as well. But the the, the writing, I fell in love with it, man. Like, okay. it was uh, emotional as well, you know, like, yeah, and, and right. fun at the same time, you know, like oh. it's it's hard to mix um, uh, emotional and fun and have a good experience and fucking. You, you did an amazing thing. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, the more people that tell me that that's what I'm doing, if I'm writing, then yeah, I guess, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, just, you know. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
I, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, um, I just, I really struggle with that idea because when I sit down to actually try and write something, if it's something else, I, I'm like taking an hour to write something simple. Uh, it just, it doesn't flow as well as the creative idea does. Uh, so yeah, that, that way I feel like I'm a, I'm a creator. Uh, but to, to know that the dialogue and the the storyline and that's kind of hitting really well, yeah. that, that's good to hear. The um, when somebody says so, uh, so what kind of book have we got here? Like, what do you tell me about it? I say, well, this is the story that Ozzy Osbourne and John Hughes would have made together. And I try to do that slice of life, the family stuff, uh, and um, I think it's going to be more relatable that way. If somebody's uh, grew up in a house where their siblings were fighting like that, uh, yeah. you know. He, um, it's definitely the the black sheep and a scapegoat at the same time. Al Maurice, um, yeah, no, that's that's great to hear. Thanks, guys, for saying that. I mean, you you made a, such a book that it's really difficult not to connect with it because there's music and there's family drama and there's a, a, a father and son relationship, a mother and son, a sister and brother. Mm -hmm. You have a lot going on uh, in in a well paced comic because you can put all those things in a book in a book, but if you don't pace it well, if you don't uh, explore a little bit of everything in a well timed manner, it can all go to shit really quickly. Yeah, and, but you mean but like you uh, just it... be boring? Or, or be confusing, or maybe you 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 don't explore it uh, enough. But you have yeah. you have chosen to depict the things in such a way that I think works because in simple scenarios you describe the relationship of two characters. For example, the brother and sister Maurice and his sister. It's really clear from the get go what is their relationship. From his little dialogue to the actions, you immediately get the the, the gist of the relation the relationship, and then you expand from that. But from the get go, it's yeah. understandable. It, it's really well paced. Okay, that's cool. And, uh, one of the things I tell people is, uh, you know, your family, you you have to love each other, but you don't have to like each other, and that that is yeah. very much their relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, noticeable. And yeah, and it works. It works really well. Very cool. Um, yeah, that, that was that was important to me. Those um, those back and forths. Um, again, I'm going to bring up my sister and the household we grew up in. I love my sister, but I didn't like everything that she listened to, and you know, I made that very vocal. I remember, um, <laughs> I remember having the argument. Uh, you don't even listen to Madonna. You don't know. And I, I sat there and listened to the whole album just so I could argue about it. You know, <laughs> I I was that stubborn about it. You know, I'm going to sit here and listen to something I know I'm going to hate. And uh, you know, I did. The, you uh, hate it? Did you hate it? Yeah, no, I, I softened up on uh, on Madonna, I guess, at the time. But that that Vogue <laughs> shit that needed to end. Um, uh, and you look through the the liner notes, and I saw that you know she had these writing partners and all that kind of stuff. She's not even writing her own music, and and you know, I I was a very stubborn, you know. 13 14 year old um yeah, yeah. uh but the uh the, the full circle the that whole you know uh coming back around and and realizing that that genre shouldn't split the brother and sister up you know that these characters have conflict but they do reconcile and they have realizations inside the book also yep. because at some point they they both are talking and and maurice tells her why are you doing this oh sorry it's it's my default. I always yeah. do this with you. But yeah, I'm supposed sorry, to. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then they, okay, we, we realize this. Okay, let's do it another way. Yeah. Let's try to bring things closer together each, with each other. Yeah. Uh, um, no, that, that's, the, that's great. Are that's you great a, yeah. so, uh, When you research, when you put yourself in the place of the writer, because at some point you do, either mm -hmm. you call yourself a writer or not, you become a writer and write these comics. Yeah. Do you do a lot of research regarding the pacing and how are you going to fill those pages with the story 
the amount of pages that each story beat is going to take yeah. or it, you let it flow i i do just let it flow i know i've got like this um this list of ideas that i know i want to hit and uh, i'm trying to get there in a way that seems organic for the character um you know when you're watching a film or you're even if you're reading a comic it's a bit less than a comic but what are the characters doing between panels you know um if you watch just say you watched empire strikes back and then uh the movie ends with uh luke on that ship and then they have to wait until i don't know when return of the jedi starts but what is luke doing in between like he's just sitting there chilling on that ship like <laughs> i'm interested in that and it doesn't make any sense for a character to have this kind of story where if i leave maurice for a, a while what's he doing with his power when i'm not actually concentrated on him as a character so at the moment issue one to issue three really doesn't leave maurice's side so it's seeing all of these different paths and if uh you see like a the uh, kind of origin story of spider-man you go why would the character why would the writer want to leave peter parker's side while he's finding out these powers and strengths so at the moment the pace is kind of kept up with the idea of that origin i want to explore his yeah. uh strengths but also his weaknesses i want to show what he's going to have to give up as a hero um but at one point, I'm going to try and get away from that, introduce characters whose arcs have started already, uh, but they're going to get the focus and we're going to leave Maurice around alone for a little bit and then come back to other characters. Uh, but it's great to hear that the pace is actually working for it. You know, uh, when somebody I mean, read issue are, one. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, if you are letting it flow and the pace works that good, I think you can yeah. start calling yourself a writer, man. Okay. <laughs> In All my right. opinion. All right, all right. That's great to hear. <laughs> all right, all right. Then you can change my uh, description on the um, YouTube channel, on the stream there channel. Uh, writer creator. Then <laughs> uh, no, that that's great to hear because uh, after issue one, uh, somebody like called me and said, "What? It just it just ended," and I went, "Yeah, it's a comic. There's going to be another one. It's going to be another one." They they thought it was just I'm going to try and cram an entire life story of this kid into 28 pages of a comic. Um, but it, that's kind of the, one of the reasons why I don't think I'll ever stop doing this. Uh, because people want to know about this character. I love the guy. He probably Same. wouldn't agree with my music tastes, but yeah, we'd agree on something, he, but not all of it. He can love you, but he doesn't have to like you. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Yeah. Great job. That's awesome. So I want <laughs> I want us to go through, uh, because you have a Kickstarter going on uh, we, for issue three. But before that, I want to play a game. Okay. So you have Maurice's powers. We all three have it. So we all three can answer this question. Uh, this is the scenario. Fight before you. You know it's going to last one song. Right. And you have the, the Walkman. What's the song you play for that fight? I'm going to answer first because I have been thinking about this since yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you can answer. Uh, my first song, the, the only song I would play for that fight, it's going to be uh, Lamb of Gods, Again We Rise. Because right. okay. the, that's a, a song that for me is about fighting just from the very first moment of it. Yep. And that's the song we used when we played role-playing games to uh, basically start every fight. I, yeah. If I was playing that song, then there was a fight to be to be had. So <laughs> right. that's that's, awesome. that's that's my uh, my choice. Yeah, uh, um, that that's that's a great question. Want to go next. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I want to uh, kind of deep dive into your question as well. Uh, so. Do you listen to that song when you need to be pepped up? Or is it yeah. just, if it comes on, I'm like, I'm feeling it now. Like, uh, oh, maybe I was feeling bad before, but now I'm feeling good. No, no. Uh, if I need a, a, a pick me up, yeah. I put that song uh, or maybe, well, I have this scenario and I have the, 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 the album scenario next and then right. the discography scenario. So <laughs> okay. You might want to start thinking about yeah. this. No, I'm thinking now. Uh, for, for me, that, that one song would be... Um, Angel of Death by Slayer. That that song gets me every time. 
you know there's a reason why people lift weights to to slayer uh you know, <laughs> yeah that that would be the song and um just that 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 battle cry that tom Araya does at the start of the song you know just launch me into a mosh pit of you know gloomy yeah. goths and we'd see who lasts the longest um uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a great question ignacio i would have well, to go I mean, um attack i think the song's called oh, ziltodia attacks by devon townsend all um, right uh the devon townsend project he did a, an album that i love the whole album it's called uh Zilt ziltoid the omniscient it's about a um omniscient alien that comes to earth demanding earth's finest cup of coffee and then uh when he gets served the cup of coffee he, he feels like uh, um, the humans are hiding their finest being and declares war and it's, right it's fucking amazing. The whole is that the is whole... that in the song contained that's, in the song, or is it like a concept? That's the album. That's the concept, concept of the album. whole album. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a great I, album. The whole I think uh, Devin might be one of those people. Like, how hard would it be, you know, for for Wack Comics for us to get Devin this book and see what he thinks of it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gotta... I think we all have to send it to him at the same time, like just a link and yeah. say, "I just, I just want your feedback." You know, more than yeah. anything, I just want Devin's feedback. All right, that's cool. Yeah. I've got my playlist for this morning. Yeah, yeah, Devin's great. <laughs> I fucking love Devin. I saw him live um, a couple of years ago, and it was really cool because um, he did it the, the night before his um, concert. He did a um, a writing workshop uh, for song songwriting workshop, right. and it was it was one of the best uh, things I've ever been to. Like, there's some advice um, from that that I still carry to this day. Yeah, right. I, I, yeah, I, I remember um, uh, one of the things he said during it was because he, um, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. No, I won't talk about that. Never mind. Sorry. I'm intrigued now, Ooh, though. Mysterious. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, all, right, all right. All right. Well, he was saying. Um, oh, no, no. Shut up. No, no, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, do yeah, it, if, do it, it. if it's a bit too risque. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, maybe I'll tell you after if you've got some time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there seems like a story in there that I could use for uh, some reference material there later on. Uh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh, don't let's let, don't spoil it then, Lee. No. That's a good choice. <laughs> uh, so the Kickstarter has like what three days left? Yeah, right? Yep, yeah, like just over 48 you hours. Actually. Are, you are. Way over your funding goal, so mm -hmm. congratulations! You Thank funded. You. Yeah, that's one of the. You, that there's a, a heavy weight that get that gets lifted off your back when you fund. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what's your experience with Kickstarter? What makes you come back? Um, I, I guess the it's the connection to to people. Um, you know, uh, they're there is like in, there's so many so much risk in uh becoming a comic book creator because the the printing costs uh they they don't they don't allow for like a short run so if you print 100 books it's really expensive but if you print a thousand books you know you're making comics you're printing comics for about two dollars as opposed to yeah. four or five dollars um so i i really just like to get out there and um use kickstarter as that platform to find you know, uh, new fans, but also find uh, a reconnection to the old fans as well. Um, and I, I probably that my first experience was a nightmare. I had uh, forty days to get the the funding goal down up to twelve k uh, Australian dollars, and mm -hmm. it went down to the last two hours to actually crawl past that. You know, and oh. I felt like I was crawling past that line as well, like I was almost done, and. For me to spend my days doing marketing and publishing for other companies and then spend my nights just on uh Your own you know, social media just constantly yeah. going constantly going i was like you know i would not have been a nice person to be around by that that time <laughs> uh so this time around i i cut it down to 1500 i actually worked longer hours on my freelance work and actually saved up money for the illustrator by myself and the Kickstarter at the moment is just about trying to get enough funds to print this thing without, you know, being homeless, really. Um, that, that's a nice goal. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's, uh, you know, what to stay within the house. Yeah. That, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, for for me, it's the it's a, it's a great platform, you know. Um, the, the one thing that I, I do worry about is when uh, comic book fans are kind of going through Kickstarter and they're trying to find that new book. I'm not sure if my book goes well. I don't really want a comic book about metal. I don't much like metal, uh, and because I can't really promote it without having an image of Maurice, you know, kicking ass as a drummer, or um, you know, I, I hope that people look at it and go, you know, this I'm giving this a go. You know, it doesn't matter what it's about, really. Just as long as people look at it and go, this person's put in the effort. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And Kickstarter allows that. Kickstarter allows some really Definitely. innovative, you know, uh, new ideas to actually get on the platform. As simple as it is. Uh, but yeah, if anybody's out there wanting to get uh, a Kickstarter up and running, uh, get in contact with me. I, I love helping people out with it. I think the more the community connects and um, looks after each other. Uh, it's better for us, better for every indie creator out there. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Well, you have uh, different pledge tables and you have mm -hmm. a lot of uh, cool, cool stuff. But I really love especially your your covers, your the amount of variant covers from the uh, wide var var variety of artists, very talented, all of them, all of them. Yeah. Uh, so it's part of the game, but what makes you choose uh, one artist over the other for certain? Are you a hands-on uh, uh, artistic manager or let them do whatever they want? Um, I, I give people the option. You know, if I, if I hand across issues one to three and say, I just want to know what you see in this character, you know, um, to, to come up with your own idea, to, to see where you take that character and in what environment you see them um and uh to to um to bring up lee lee's work is actually in issue three it's me uh oh, he's yes. got a, uh, a a pin-up poster at the back of the book and there um is, there we go there we go there he is um for me uh the kickstarter actually gives me that opportunity to go out and reach out to an artist and go i love what you do um let, let's put some work together um and lee happened because we were walking he was walking through uh the con and he, he said he was an illustrator and we just started having a conversation and that's just how it came came around yeah. um the the illustrators that i got for the variants were pretty much the same way you know um i stumbled across adam nichols at um at that con as well and um laura hillsby was um Somebody who got in contact with me and said, I just read issue one and issue two. I love it. And I started following her on Twitter and I saw that she actually did some really great music related comics as well. So I just went like, let's just do a cover. Um, I, it's one of those things where, although it's reached its funding goal, I, I just, and I'm being greedy here. Uh, I want more, I want more, I want more because I just spent it on this comic. You know, it goes straight into variants. Um, I've got yeah. two others planned uh with um some new illustrators that want to give it a go as well like like the character that, enough to to give it a go um so yeah that that's that's one of the reasons why I, I just can't let it go um i love connecting with an illustrator to see the different style to see what they do with this character i'll you know who i'd love to see do this character is this this guy right down here ignacio <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah ignacio was an amazing artist he i don't know do you know you know killer don't you uh, yeah the yep yeah this absolutely guy, this guy did a, a killer comic book the old man um, Rue. oh no, right the no the, the the previous one semper fire one all right yeah. awesome that's that's well, the wiggy right there he's fucking killer he's a beast all right yeah, he wants would you like to give everything. it a go yeah, do you yeah, want to do course. a very? He wants me to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're open to commissions, I'd, I, you know, I'd love to get a conversation going about that. That'd be amazing. Definitely, definitely. Awesome. I yeah, great. Really there you go. It. Well, you asked the question: How do I connect with illustrators? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wasn't fishing for a commission. But... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? You, you got to look where it, go, it comes from. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I'd yeah. love to have you on on as uh, one of the pinups. That'd be amazing uh yeah well, uh, we we be looking at maybe issue three or issue four now i think i've got one page left yeah, uh, that was a, that... that's what i was going to ask you because you have a lot going on but 
you you are still including things basically giving it giving the the people who pledge even more than you have in the in the campaign because you're planning yeah. for more pinups you're planning for more content yeah so that's yeah. amazing uh, uh yeah i i i've got a problem <laughs> we all do man i really do um <laughs> You know, there, there'd be things where I'm I'm foregoing stuff in my own life just because I want to see another variant cover or I want to see another shirt design. Um, you know, I, I do love it. I, I'm going to have to see somebody about it, but at the moment <laughs> it just fills me with so much joy to see an illustrator take on this character. And if anybody out there listening to it wants to give it a go, just get in contact with me, please. <laughs> please. Also, if you read the comic and your life is similar to the comic, it contact Get in him. touch. <laughs> <laughs> you have read this book from cover to cover. That's amazing. Yes, I did. Yep. When I finished reading it, I, I read it and I, okay, I need to read more. And so I read cover to cover. But yep. well, now that you mention it, I, I also read uh, when it happened, the when Jesse, the, the artist for, for issues one and two, uh, passed mm -hmm. away, that, yep. must, that must have been devastating. As, as, I, a, as a as a creator as a as a friend as a as, as a collaborator because I, in some point the 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 project is balanced between the the words and the the, the images and losing jesse must have feel really disheartening i, I in my okay. opinion looking at it from the outside yeah, uh, and, and then you found another great artist to replace him, and I think that must, I, I, I must have been difficult, but you managed to to do it. So, would you mind, if you want, if you can, going through yep. that process of finding out, dealing with it, and yeah. finding the strength to okay, let's let, let's start rolling again with this. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it was. Uh, it's an incredible loss for the comic book industry that you know Jesse Ham was a he was a humble genius. You know, he had so many people he was teaching, and he he uh, you know carried me through the whole experience of putting an issue out. Um, yeah, he was integral, and to Maurice, you know, he's, he was one of the creators. You know, he was the father of Maurice as well. Um, so yeah, when when I got that news, uh, I was devastated. And at that stage, we had already started working on issue three as a script. And um, after issue two wrapped, Jesse actually got in contact with me and apologized to me that he wasn't going to be available for issue three because he was moving on to a different project. He was actually going to start working with Dark Horse on something. And I went, you know what? Um, the amount that this guy's taught me, uh, I still didn't think I had enough to actually get go out there and get issue three done. Uh, but I asked him if uh, he could ever be, you know, just just there as a consultant to this character. You know, you, you're responsible for him now just as much as I was. And, uh, you know, Jesse was so humble about that as well. You know, he said, you know, anything you need, I'll help you find that next illustrator. I just can't take on these two projects at the same time because they were overlapping. And uh, he, he made me, you know, he made me realize just how much I'd learned from him. So I, I'm in debt to Jesse Ham, absolutely. Um, so there were one morning after he passed away, somebody texted me like the first thing I woke up to was that he had passed away and uh, I was just just in shock because he was only 45. Yeah. Um, 45 and when yeah. somebody like that kind of leaves that early, knowing that they had this wealth of knowledge, um, you know, it's just an incredibly sad thing. Uh, but, you know, you feel good about connecting with him, uh, getting to know him as a person, uh, getting to know him as a comic book creator, actually putting something together that I'm proud of. That's if you are uh, on your background there, you'll see on uh, Maurice's drumstick. Uh, there's actually a um, a reference to Jesse Ham. Uh, it's just etched in there, JH. Um, so it, the the legacy of Jesse Ham, I think, is you know, it's. Um, it's it's already you know set in stone you know the comic book fans yeah. uh, that are you know no and I think he's got more comic book creative fans like everybody knew Jesse Ham and um, so when uh, when it came time to, for actually finding a new illustrator um, 
I knew what I wanted. Um, yeah, rip Jesse Ham. There you go. Uh, rest in peace, mate. Um, I knew what I wanted, and um, uh, I knew it was going to be a struggle because you, if you sat a hundred illustrators side by side, you'd pick, be able to pick up on these these moments where you look at somebody and go, "Okay, that's your style. That's clearly your style." So, in issue two to issue three to go to a new illustrator, I was really worried that um, it would be too jarring. You know, it would be this seems like a different book now. Maurice seems like a different character, but uh, Nicola did such a, an amazing job at actually bridging that gap between uh, his style and Jesse's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, and uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I think that the way you start the issue with the sequence you start the issue, mm. it's, a, it's a great gateway, a, re a great segue into a new style. Uh, because that is so amazing that you the picked... oniric, Yeah. The, yep. oniric, uh, uh, the oniric sequence it's, it lends itself to a, a, a shift, you know? There's a shift going on here, there's something different, and then yep. you basically land in the new style more gently, so to speak. That was uh, one of those happy accidents. It, it made more sense to actually, like, um, for, that, for that to happen. Uh, and I, I'm glad that it, it did happen the way it did. Uh, the narration, all the, the captions on there, at that on that first opening sequence for issue three uh this feels different uh like i tried to really hammer that home as well and then mm -hmm. uh, after the first sequence when it snaps back into um the real world uh not to give away anything but it, it is a dream sequence um yeah no that's great that you picked up on that that's what i've been uh telling people like that's one thing that i'm actually really proud of the way that that has flowed and uh when you guys say that and i'm you, a writer i go yeah. I go, I'm not, this is just happening. It's going through me. You know, it's just organic. That's yeah. what happens to writers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great to hear. No, thank, thanks. Thanks for that. That's amazing. Uh, it was, it was a stressful time because I didn't know whether or not um, I was going to find another illustrator and uh, losing Jesse Ham, even as a, a consultant, um, you know, he was a, he was an amazing teacher, that guy. Yeah, he was. He shared his knowledge with the world, basically. He did. With everyone I think who he was asking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I hope that at one point, you know, you, the, the great people that you meet throughout your life, you know, they all rub off on you on in some, other, some way or another. Um, so I kind of had that same mentality, too, whenever anybody asked me about this comic or starting my own project or creating something. Um, so anytime somebody asks me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Help um, yeah, helping, it feels so much yeah. better than trying to hinder somebody else to try and get up, you know? So yeah. whenever somebody says, Hey, uh, how did you start Maurice? Or, uh, I need help trying to start my own project. I'll go, all right, I'll start writing an email and then I'll look up and I've already written like 500 words trying to help them out. So <laughs> I, I love, I love that part of the community as well. Like it's something that some people, if you've got the inkling to just to go, if you've got this idea, just just get it on paper. Let's just just get it done. Just get it out there. You know, you might be disheartened with how many comics are actually on Kickstarter at the moment, uh, but I think the the right story, the right writer, um, and the right illustrator, you can put some amazing stuff together. Stuff that makes the world better. The world's better now that Maurice is in it. The world's better now that Killer Roo was in it. You know? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, we it's need a great to tell comic. these stories and. Uh, what was the story with finding Nicola? Um, I had connected with a whole bunch of people in the community, and uh, that was just one of the suggestions that came out from somebody. Um, uh, I can't remember who it was. Uh, but, yeah, it was just a list. Somebody emailed me and said, hey, here's a list of people I think would do a really great job. And uh, I got in contact with Nicola after looking through his Instagram and going, Let's just give it a go. And um, he did like this uh his take on it like he did his pinup version of maurice and yeah. uh i looked at it like for for hours going you know um because his, his style was more of like a, a an anime style you know uh, mm -hmm. more angular jaw and maurice is not not that kid you know he's not meant to look like a superhero 
Um, yeah. But there was just something in the way he was drawing his his body, his stance, the the body language of the character was amazing. Um, so after after that, we did like a page of just <clears throat> um, that first issue and just you know just gave it a go. And um, you know, obviously, it was different to working with Jesse because by the time uh, issue two wrapped, um, we were we were getting through like a page in no time. And the first ten pages of issue three uh with with nicola was was more difficult uh but by the last 10 like we we're hitting our stride you know we're ready for issue four now uh that's going to be what in the works as, as soon as this kind of project wraps issue four's on nice. uh, absolutely yeah um but yeah it's it's been a been an experience you know you only really realize how much knowledge you've got once you're forced to get out there and just get it done you know? yeah and, and I have to thank Jesse Hill and, for that. And how much you know, and how much you've learned in the in in the meantime, from one yeah. iteration from, of the project to the next, and maybe that's part of of Jesse's legacy, and and your homage to him is keep on going. Yeah, with what absolutely. He taught you. Yeah, and yeah. you you have done a a, a a really great job. Yeah, with thanks with again, guys. On. I mean, thanks again guys you did it uh, did you guys so, uh like the the wraparound cover as well oh yeah i love the yeah. that was great i was there's trying a, to there's a go go sorry. sorry i was i was trying to find it to to share it but i can't couldn't see the whole wraparound uh, that's okay uh there on the back there is the the shape of the villain uh marked out in um in a like amplifier chord we try to put in some stuff on that cover. It's so so much more interesting to to expand that cover and go. The cover itself is a story. You know, we've got Maurice on yeah. the, the front, but then on the back we got the the yeah. goths, you know, coming after him. I love uh, lots of fun. Covers. Why can't yeah. every cover be a wraparound cover? Why well? can't that? Yeah. <laughs> that's the question. That's the question we should be asking. Um, yeah. Now, thanks so much for all the compliments, all the feedback, all the the great ideas we got to hear about no Devin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks Good. for having me on the show too, guys. No worries. Is, is, there, yeah. is there anything you want to um, say before we before we uh, wrap it up? I uh, no. I just wanted to uh, thank you guys again, uh, but thank uh, people out there listening who you do uh, do get to catch this uh, this stream. Um, yeah, get in contact. I'd love to hear what you think of the book. You know, and I can take criticism. I might have to curl away for a while and recur. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I love, um, I love hearing people's feedback if they go, I just don't get it. And I go, well, you know, you've got to allow me to ask you a question about what, what don't you get, you know, why yeah. don't you get it? And I, I need to work on that. I love giving this comic book to people who don't read comics and just say, tell me what you think. I just want to know. Comics yeah. shouldn't be just for people who love comics. You know, they should be the gateway to people loving comics. <coughs> And I hope it's a good gateway comic, comic for people who likes music but don't like comics. Yeah. Yeah, or all, all the other way around too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's it. Um, but you know, uh, it's the, amazing to connect to people. There's the link the, there in the chat, but it's also in the description below. And I've also got uh Aaron's links for Twitter and Instagram to go follow him there and keep up to date uh with the uh, future issues coming out. And uh, I'm, I look forward to, to talking with you every single issue that comes out, man, because oh, yeah. I'm, I'm along for this ride uh, yeah, until cool. it ends. I fucking, cool. yeah. You're right. Awesome. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to guest anytime you guys want me, for sure. Thanks again. Oh, excellent. No. Thanks for coming, right. man. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to say, Ignacio? I mean, I have questions about music, but we can talk about that on, on back backstage. <laughs> 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 Uh, thanks everyone that's been watching in the chat and uh, anyone that's made it this far on the replay. Cheers. Uh, see you. See you all later. Bye bye.